Well, I'm gonna give the drive shaft a little clean up today. Of course, these things were put on the car in natural steel, so it's a bit of pitting on it. Of course, there's probably some old paint on it as well, so hopefully it'll clean up. There's the exhaust for the car. Well, I'm just about halfway done. It's a little laborious. You can see the uh, what the surface is like. It cleans up pretty good. There is a small amount of pitting, but it's certainly better than that. Got it sanded. There is some pitting that I'll need to need to address. Put my hand down there so it'll focus. And you know some areas some areas are worse worse than others. This side of the drive shaft is pretty clean. Got some stripes here. I don't know if these are the paint stripes for the code. What that is. Well, today I'm going to get some paint on the drive shaft. A while back, I sanded it and primed it. So now I'm going to take the tape off the yokes and U joints, try to clean that up and tape it off better. And same on this end. And I have some. Steel paint that I'm going to use to paint the drive shaft with. You know. All right. Well, the drive shaft's painted. That Rust-Oleum steel paint. I was a little bit surprised to see how metallic it is. Uh, but I guess in a sense it looks like bare steel. But you know, regardless, it'll be under the car. But it certainly looks much much better than it did when I started so I'm happy with it and I think it'll look pretty nice when it gets to the point where I can reinstall it I'll see how tight these are might have to get out my half-inch drive ratchet. <clears throat> Once I get the bolts out, and I'm gonna, I'll jack, I'll take the motor mount loose here, and I'll jack up the transmission Slide the cross member out. Oh, damn, those are tight. <sighs> a lot of leverage with a three inch drive wrench. I saved my big boxes just for reasons like this. I cut them up or 
take them apart and unfold them. And you know, like I said before, the biggest part of working on old cars or fixing up old cars, restoring them, cleaning dirty, grainy old parts. Well, I cleaned up the cross member and I took my angle grinder with a 120 grit sanding disc and I went over and cleaned it up and I got to, I got most of the rust off it. It's the, the worst of it in this area here and also over here. Well, I have the cross member coated with POR15. And I got it hanging from my lift there. I also have a little, little bucket of water here with a rag. POR15 cures with humidity, which is odd. So, with the rag saturated with water, as it evaporates, it should help cure the part. And here in Arizona, certain times of the year, the humidity is pretty low, so I'll give it a little bit of help. I have the cross member bolts cleaned, and I'm soaking in purple cleaner for a couple days. Brushed them off, and then I'm spraying them with flat black. And uh, I'll let them dry for a while. And Set them aside and everything be ready to put back together. I have the headers out. It creates a lot more space under the car for cleaning and painting. They're in decent condition. They're a bit rusty. So what I think I'll probably do is I'll probably just sand them and paint them. You can see on the right side header where oil changes were done and the oil dripped down onto the tubes and collector. So that'll have to be cleaned with, you know, purple cleaner, get all the oil off. Otherwise, uh, tubes are in pretty good shape. And they're impressive, they're big old two inch tubes. So I'll have to get them cleaned up and repainted, but it's probably down the road a ways. Uh, I'm going to get further along. I'll probably change the suspension out and do all that before I start working on the headers again. I have the oil filter adapter out, I have the starter out, uh, the converter dust cover. I had to remove that to get the starter out. and. Well, I'm going to paint part of the subframe today. I'm going to paint it up to, to where the firewall bends up. And I'm going to try to get inside the subframe. And to do that, I have a piece of sponge that I wrapped around a piece of wire. So obviously I'm not going to get all the way up into the subframe. But I'll get about, you know, 16 inches into it. And at least looking at it from the bottom of the car, looking into the subframe, it'll look like it's all coated. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dunk my sponge into the paint. And then I'll run the sponge into the silk. All right, it's messy.
All right, well, I got the subframe painted up to the firewall, and it turned out reasonably good. I did end up painting the rubber body bushings. Um, I had, you know, spots of paint on them, and I thought I would, at that point, it would just look better just to go ahead and paint them, so I did. And I painted the subframes with Rust-Oleum, semi-gloss black. And the method I used to paint them is I used a sponge to paint the inside of the subframe. I used a cheap brush to paint the outside. And once I had a good coat of paint on it before it started setting up, I used a foam brush to go over the paint and take most of the brush streaks out. And that seems to work pretty well. So as you can see, you know, there's not a lot of streaks in the paint. And you know, lots of times, not focusing here. A lot of times you paint with a brush and you just get a lot of streaks. But using that method where, you know, I put the, the big coat of paint on with a brush, a regular bristle brush, and then I come back over the top of it with a foam brush and it takes most of the brush streaks out. But it ends up looking pretty good. Well, it's getting close to time to put the cross member in. I got the, the hardware cleaned up and painted. Still need to paint these brackets for the transmission. The pan on the transmission's a little bit rusty, so I decided to go ahead and get a new transmission pan. I got this beautiful B&M pan. And it's cast aluminum pan and it's it's a thing of beauty. Hopefully it fits well. Sometimes with these cast pans you end up having to modify the bracket a little bit to get them to fit. And, you know, I may end up having to do that with this as well. So I'll we'll see. May have to notch it. It is a beautiful pan. And, you know, I got some hardware with it. I got the extension for the filter, pan bolts, plug. Also has a it's drilled and tapped for a temperature sender, which I'm not going to use that, but you know it's there if I ever want to in the future. Uh, supplied with a quart gasket, I don't think I'll use that. I have a new transmission mount. It's a factory style mount. It's a brand new one. I have two gallons of B&M Trick Shift transmission fluid. Got a new transmission filter and a rubber gasket. I won't use that gasket either. But I will use this gasket. Got this nice Felpro gasket. And uh, I'll be using that. So, after I get the cross member in and the new transmission mount, Then, I'll probably install the drive shaft. After I install the drive shaft, I'll probably hook up the parking brake. Once all that's done, then I'll look to changing out the transmission pan, installing a new filter, and uh, transmission fluid.
Alright. Time to install the cross member. All right, I got the cross member bolt started. And transmission bolts lines right up. It's always nice. going to tighten up the cross member bolts until after I get the headers back in because I have to lift up the right side of the engine to get the right side headers in and so I'll just keep all this loose so it can flex around I'll leave everything loose. Sure. Well, it's time to put the drive shaft back in. So that's good. Make sure there's no, no dirt around here. Bit of, a little bit of a little bit of white grease around the seal. Just make sure I don't have a dry seal. And I don't. I mean it's got transmission fluid on it, so this is probably not totally necessary, but you know, I think it's a good practice. I've also put a coat of white grease on the yoke and I'm trying to line this up. Well, let's see. There we go. I'm going to line this up so the U joint in the back is horizontal. That way, when I take my retainer, little tie wrap off, U joint caps won't fall out. All right. So move around to the other side. Okay. Now to get the back, you can see I positioned the U joint when I put the yoke in the transmission. So the U-joint is horizontal this way, that way it'll keep the caps from falling off. And I also have the back wheels off the ground so I can move the yoke. How 
about that. Right in. How often does that happen? I got new bolts for the U-joint straps. If you watched one of my earlier videos, you will have noticed I had a hard time getting these bolts loose. And so I replaced the bolts because the old ones were rounding off just a little bit and I didn't want to get into a situation where wouldn't be able to get them off in the future. All right, well, I'm gonna lower the rear end down and tighten these two, then I'll raise it back up, spin it around, and tighten the other two. Well, the drive shaft's reinstalled. And got it all cleaned up and painted. Certainly looks much nicer than it did. Get the parking brake hooked up now. Well, I now have the parking brake hooked up. So, next step, change out the transmission pan. Okay, well, I'm going to drop the transmission pan. The pan's a little bit rusty. I'm going to go ahead and change the filter, your transmission fluid, and since the pan's off, I'm going to replace it with a nice B&M cast aluminum pan. So the first thing I need to do, get all the bolts out. I'm just going to let that drain for a while until it's drained down to the level of the pan and then I'll take a couple more bolts out. Well, I have the pan down. So what I'll do is I'll just let that drip overnight. So when I remove the pan tomorrow, then, you know, I'm not going to have transmission fluid running all over the place. Most of it will have dripped into the pan. So, you know, the pan's down. And that's typically the worst of it because it's just so messy. And with the new pan, I'll have a drain plug, so if I need to remove fluid in the future, I can just pull the plug.
All right, well, getting ready to install the pan. I have the old pan down. I have the B&M extension. You can see right up there for the pickup tube. And that lowers the filter down. And then there's a nut, there's a jam nut right there on the, on the bolt that allows me to set the height of the filter. And it's still not quite level. It's not quite flat. It tips just a little bit. But I think that'll be all right. So, now, gotta clean the flange, make sure it's really clean. So when I put the pan up, it'll stick. Now one thing I found is if you look right here, there's a plug right there. So what that tells me is that there's a shift kit in the transmission. Because typically the shift kits will give you a plug that you plug that hole with. So that's what I'm assuming. All right, well, I'm getting ready to put the gasket on the pan. And first what I did is I used a little Teflon tape on this brass plug. And uh, that's the tapped hole for the temperature sender. I'm not using that. And I have the drain plug in. And there's a gasket with a rubber seal that goes here. So I have that installed and that's tightened up. So now what I'm going to do is I'll use some ultra black Permatex RTV and I'll put a layer of that on the on the pan, apply the gasket and then put a layer on the gasket. And I don't need to get a real heavy layer on it, just you know, just a film. So I'll do that next. All right, I got the gasket in place. I have a nice little film of RTV on the gasket. And now I'm gonna clean the mating flange on the transmission, make sure that's nice and clean so the gasket will stick. And then I can set the pan in place.
All right, I got all the other bolts pulled up. It's just so it's making good contact. This guy got a little bit of RTV squeezing out. And I'm just going to let it sit overnight like that. And then tomorrow, I'll tighten it up. All right, well, I have the shifter cable parts here. They're all clean, painted, ready to be installed. And uh, you see where I modified the cable bracket to fit the pan. Oh, I'm just absolutely getting hammered by allergies. Oh, God. Ugh. All right. Well, get these installed. I'm trying to finish up that pan installation. All right, well, the pan's installed, and I have the shifter linkage hooked back up. I got the speedometer hooked up. I didn't put any transmission fluid in it yet. I'll probably wait for that. I'm going to change the dipstick tube O-rings. After, after I do that, I'll probably put six quarts in. So it cleaned up pretty well. You can only get the transmission so clean without removing it from the car. But, you know, given that it's up in the tunnel, it doesn't look too bad. I got the B&M converter there, and so I bought a B&M pan, so I got a, a coordinated ensemble. <laughs> I'm not going to hook the reverse lockout linkage back up. It's just uh, some additional linkage to, to push around when I'm using the shifter. And I don't think that, well, I'm not going to take it to the drag strip. I'm, you know, I'm just at an age where I'm just not going to do that. So I don't have to worry about passing tech. And, uh, you know, the downside is it'll start in gear. So I keep that in mind. Got the uh, speedometer cable run and it's in the clips. And, uh, you know, the bracket, the shifter bracket fits, fits good. All right, well, kind of finishes it up for this part of the car. So I think I'm going to be able to finally move on for a little bit. So I think overall, you know, the area cleaned up pretty well. And, uh, you know, I, I've got it painted up to the firewall. And so now when I start working on the front end, I can get access to some of those areas I haven't gotten yet. And, you know, there'll be more work to do in the engine compartment. But, you know, overall, the bottom of the car is pretty much done. I have to run the brake lines. And I'll have to run the fuel lines. So I'll come back and do that. You know, the back of the car cleaned up pretty nicely. And, uh, you know, it's, it's come a long way from where it was. That's for certain. Well, that about finishes up the bottom of the car. Still have to run the fuel line and the brake line. But I'm hoping now maybe to move on to the front suspension. 
So thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time.